do you remember those problems during your early programming days where you had to print something in form of a star in form of a ladder or something in form of a rectangle right there were so many different patterns and you just experimented with for loops to get to that answer correct such is a problem available on lead code spiral matrix and trust me personally i believe that this problem does not test any of your problem solving skills or it does not even test how well you code but still i have found that it is asked in so many coding interviews and it is one of the interviewer's favorite so today i'm going to explore this problem a little bit and work towards an efficient solution hello friends welcome back to my channel first i will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases going forward i want to discuss something like how is this problem important and why do interviewers ask it after that we are going to solve this problem step by step and we will also do a dry run of the code so that you understand and visualize how all of this is actually working in action without further ado let's get started so first of all i want to quickly make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly in this problem you are given a m cross n matrix that means this has m rows and n columns correct and now you have to return me all of the elements in a spiral order so first of all what does a spiral order actually mean spiral is a pattern that looks like this correct so given our matrix in a test case number 1 a spiral order will look something like 4 8 15 42 1 7 50 16 and then 23 right so all of the elements should appear in this order correct similarly in our test case number 2 you can see that it is not necessary that the matrix should be a square matrix you can even have a spiral order in a rectangular matrix so in our second test case the spiral order will look something like this 1 4 7 10 11 12 9 6 3 2 5 and 8 because that is how a spiral order actually works so for our second test case my answer would be correct so you can see that both of these are in a spiral fashion right now if you feel that you have understood the problem statement now in a better way feel free to first try it out otherwise let me go into a little bit of discussion and see what makes this problem so important for all of these interviews so to keep things interesting i am taking a bigger example this time you can see that once again i have a matrix and in this matrix i have six rows and five columns now personally speaking i have never understood why this problem is so important and why this is even asked in the interviews but from my experience as a interviewer i have seen some people and i have seen the common mistakes that they make and that made me realize okay this could be some problem which can assess how the candidate is actually thinking so first of all when i give this problem to candidates the first problem that they have is okay what do you actually mean by a spiral order so a spiral structure looks something like this right it will have consecutive inner rings and it will end at the very last element so sometimes people will simply fail to understand what you mean by a spiral order they will try to iterate the elements in this fashion and then they feel a lot of problem like okay how do i even get to all the elements so that is the first problem so once you understand that okay a spiral order will be starting from all the edge elements and then going all the way inside so this is how a spiral order will look like okay now the next problem that i have seen candidates face is they do not know how to start to iterate this array because as you know the conventional way of iterating a 2d array will be a row wise manner right either you will go row by row or what you can even do is you can go column by column right but now what you have to do is you have to traverse a row first then a column then again a row in the reverse direction then a column in the reverse direction so this gets a little bit confusing and this is the second point which i have often seen people facing a problem with next now even if they try to figure out that okay this is how they have to iterate then they will try to come up with all sorts of patterns and try to figure out a solution sometimes what they will do is okay they will first try to traverse through the outer ring then they will go through the inner ring and then they will iterate through the innermost ring and that approach once again becomes complicated 
because you do not know if it is a square matrix, if it is a rectangular matrix, and then how do you manage all of your variables? So these are the primary three problems that I have often seen candidates facing. And I have often seen that, okay, candidates will try to rotate this array at every instance and then try to come up with a solution. But I'm here to tell you that you do not need any of these approaches. This problem is actually very, very simple. And you just have to proceed in a very straightforward way, the way you are iterating and printing all your elements in a spiral order. So that is what we're exactly going to do. So what I have over here is my original matrix that has six rows and five columns. You can see all of these are my row indices starting from zero all the way to five. And all of these are my column indices starting from zero and all the way up to four. So now you know that you can refer to any element in your matrix. For example, the element at row two and column one will be 12, right? So now you know a way to refer to each and every element in your 2D array, correct? You have to begin somewhere, right? So I'm going to initialize some variables. So column begin will be defined at zero because this is your beginning column and column end will be defined as four because this is your end column. Similarly, you will have two more variables, row begin, which points at zero and row end, which points at five. So these two variables are defining your beginning row and the very last row. Correct. Now you have to begin iterating. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I will start a while loop and this loop will have a certain condition that row begin should be less than row end and column beginning should be less than column ending. So that is how you will start your while loop because you have to iterate through every row and every column. Correct. And now comes the fun part. How do you traverse this in a spiral order? You will start from the first element and then first of all, you will traverse right. Correct. So that is exactly what we're going to do over here. We traverse right and then we will start a for loop that starts at column begin and ends at column end. So you know that the row begin is zero and you're running a loop that starts at column begin and ends all the way up till column end. So what you're doing, you are traversing the first row of your matrix, right? So when you will traverse this and you will print out all the elements, you are going to print out one, two, three, four, and five, right? So what did you just do? You took care of the beginning row. So incidentally, what we'll do next? we are going to do row begin plus plus because we are done with this row, right? So now my row begin will point at row number one and continuing our approach of spiral order. What do we have to do next now? We have to traverse this column now, right? In a way, what we are doing is we are traversing down, right? And just look at this for loop. In this for loop, we start from row begin. That is the first row. And we end at row end, that is the last row. And we are going in a downward direction, right? So when this loop will run, you are going to iterate all of these elements in a downward direction. That is 10, 15, 20, 25, and all the way up to 30. So you see, now we took care of the last column. All of these elements are now covered, right? So naturally, what we're going to do, we are going to do column end minus minus. And this will take my column end one value previous because you can see that, okay, I have covered all of these elements, right? Now you may be able to see, right? What is happening going forward with a spiral order fashion? What do you have to do now? You have to traverse in the left direction, right? And that is exactly what we're going to do. We are going to traverse left. And then now look at this for loop that I have. What do I do over here? I start from the column end. That is, I'm starting from this column and I'm going all the way up to column beginning right over here. And I'm doing a minus minus. That means I am going in the backward direction. So when this loop runs, what will it do? It will print all of these elements in the reverse direction, right? So you're going to get 29, 28, 27 and 26. And now what did you just do? You took care of your entire row end. So naturally, what do we have to do? We have to move this row end one value up, right? And that is exactly what we do. We do a row end minus minus. So you can see 
how we are doing everything in a spiral fashion, right? Now you must be understanding what you have to do next. You once again have to go in the upwards direction, right? And you have to start at row end and you have to end at row beginning. So you can understand what we are going to do in the next loop, right? Just look at this loop. We traverse up and in this loop, we start at row end and then we end at row beginning and then we do a J minus minus. That means I am going in the upward direction, right? So when this loop runs, it will start to print all the elements from 21, 16, 11 and then 6. And at the same time, what did you see? You see, we have taken care of all elements in column begin. So naturally, we have to increment its value. And now column begin points to 1. And that is exactly what we do by doing a column begin plus plus. So this might give you some idea. What will happen now when this loop runs again? Once again, you will traverse right. And then you are going to cover 7, 8 and 9. And then you are going to traverse down, which means 14, 9 and 24. Going forward, you will traverse left. That means 23 and 22. And at the very last, you will traverse up. So 17 and 12. So you see, right? We are doing all of this in a spiral fashion, right? So this loop will continue. And at the very end, you are going to stop at 18, right? And you might be wondering, what are these two conditions? So these two conditions are just sanity checks so that you do not encounter into any index out of bound exceptions because you have to stop somewhere, right? The value of column begin cannot exceed column end. And similarly, the value of row end cannot exceed row begin, right? So this is how your code structure will look like. You can say this to be a pseudo code of some kind and you can implement it in any language of your choice. It could be Java, it could be Python, it could be JavaScript, right? And however, if you want to look at the full code along with its test cases, you can find the link to my GitHub profile and it has everything. The time complexity of this solution will be order of m cross n because we are traversing through every element and the space complexity of this solution is order of 1. That is because we do not take up any extra space to arrive at a solution. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to reiterate that this problem does not test any of your problem solving skills or any of your coding ability. It is just a representation of how clearly and logically are you thinking. When an interviewer gives you such a question, sometimes you just need to follow the instructions step by step. You saw this, right? You did not have to overcomplicate it. You literally had to traverse the entire matrix in a spiral way. And that was your answer in fact, right? So while going throughout the video, did you face any problems? Or have you seen any other problems which may seem that, hey, why am I even solving this? But they ended up being asked in your coding interviews. Tell me all such problems and any of the problems that you had in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also, let me know what problems do you want me to solve next. Until then, see ya.